Sharon, can you explain me something more about your debate background and how were you introduced to the idea of debate and the organization idea also? Okay. Uh, when I was in college, I had an opportunity. I was majoring in speech communication, but I was sort of focused on theater more than anything else. And so when I had an opportunity to either choose between taking a class in discussion or taking a class in debate, I thought, well, the easiest thing to do would be to take a class in discussion because debate took entirely too much time and too much work. So I went ahead and took the discussion class, and then I got out and was starting to do my student teaching, and the person who I was working with was a former Army sergeant, and she said, you'll teach a unit on debate. And I said, I have no idea what debate is. I have never seen a debate. And she said, well, you'll see it after you teach the unit. She was very involved in the National Forensic League, which is a high school competitive organization. And so one of my tasks when I was doing my practice teaching was to work with students and prepare them for competition. And I sort of liked it. I enjoyed that experience. So the next year when I started teaching, I started teaching at a junior high school and the rival high, junior high school said, would you like to debate us? So I went into my ninth grade class and said, are you interested in debating? And they said, yes. And I said, okay, we're gonna learn it and we're gonna win it. So I worked with the junior high school program for three years and then I transferred to high school, but I, teaching high school, but I still you know, enjoyed the competitive aspect and had gotten into it. So continued working with debate at that level and then I transferred to a college, an all-female college, still working with debate, finished my PhD, and then transferred to Northern Arizona University, where I started in 1981, and taught there until 2004 when I retired. And uh, I did off and on. It was a combination. I was a debate coach for a while, and we also did individual events, and then uh, I had a stint for six years where I was an academic administrator and dean of the School of Communication. And when I finally was allowed to get out of that, I went back into debate again. So I retired as the director of forensics, competitive speech and debate. And I retired in 2004. And when I did, a colleague of mine, Robert, Robert Trapp, said, I think you'd enjoy working with this group that I'm involved with. It's the International Debate Education Association. So I attended my first forum in 2004 in Estonia and have been working with it ever since in various capacities. So that's kind of how I got involved both with debate and with IDEA. So what does it mean to be the curriculum director and the MTT track leader? Okay, basically it's a coordination thing. I uh, am a member of the curriculum committee, which means that I help select the participants and the trainers that are gonna be at the forum and uh, I basically coordinated, I worked primarily with the MTT track, coordinating them and we had specific assignments which we'll probably talk about a little bit later. And at the forum, I, you know, at the last minute when Anka could not attend, Steve asked if I would sort of coordinate all the tracks and since I know the people that are working in the different tracks, it was an easy transition to make. So, um, in what context do you teach debate? Do you try to add your subjective opinion to the issues you're talking about? I try to keep my opinion out of it. I, you know, I, I, you know, I, and I think that one of the benefits of never having debated and, you know, made the transition from a debater to a teacher or to a coach is the idea that I can approach it from an educational standpoint. So I try to, try, you know, to work with the skills, try not to write arguments for students, but help them develop arguments and develop strategies. So uh, what type of debate and debate lectures do you think that enhances debate skills most? Let's say it is a competitive debate, maybe, um, I don't know, um, lectures or workshops or maybe camps. I, th I think all of them kind of work together. I think the competitive environment adds a little bit to it because I think students naturally like to be involved in something where they can win or lose. But I do approach debate more from a standpoint of it is an educational activity. It is not the trophies that you bring home. It's the skills and the things that you learn. I like to be very participatory. I used to lecture all the time and have gotten away from that 
and tried to be more involved with the, the students and having them do the activities. What are the skills that you think that are most important that debaters get out from debate? Oh man, so many of them. Uh, you know, critical thinking skills, able to analyze a topic, be able to look at both sides of a topic, being able to organize your thoughts rapidly, being able to structure speeches, being able to, to research and find the most important evidence and may be making a distinction between what is good evidence and what is not so good evidence and the ability just to, to be fluent as far as their speaking skills are concerned. What are your expectations of Global Youth Forum 2013 and the entity that we are looking forward to? Uh, my expectations really in all honesty, I would like for the students to come away with a very positive attitude as far as the experiences, as far as the friends that they've met, as far as the interaction. I'd like, of course, for them to learn some of the basic fundamentals of debate and what they should do to be good debaters. I'm not really linked to a format of debate because I've worked in a lot of different formats. I'm more interested in the basic fundamental skills of how to create an argument, how to refute an argument, and how to be comfortable as far as delving into a topic and finding out what the crucial issues of that topic are. Thank you very much. Okay, I know I